Why do 90% of viewership graphs have this drop at the beginning? As we uncover the reason, you'll learn the genius technique for intros that all top performing creators use. But that's not all, we're then gonna dive deep into the sneaky strategies creators use in their intros to get viewers not just watching, but immersed into their videos. Alright, so the reason that so many people are leaving is because they click on your video and then get disappointed. Something about your title and thumbnail got them curious, but as soon as your video didn't give what they expected, they started looking for something better to watch. This brings us to the first strategy of successful creators. They create their titles and thumbnails at the same time as their intros. So once they've made the title and thumbnail, they ask, what reason to watch the video did I just give? What expectations did I create? Then they make an intro that immediately lives up to those expectations. So basically, if you put something in the title and thumbnail, then you've got to show it in the intro too. But now, there's something else you gotta do that's often overlooked. Sure, this title and thumbnail promises a train crash, but what else does it promise? What feeling? It promises action. Now take a look at it. I just bought this train! Whoa, 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 that was really fast. Let's break it down slowly. There's an effect that makes it seem like we're rushing up to Jimmy. Then the train rapidly emerges, along with train horn sound effects. He immediately starts yelling at us, managing to spit out five words in the first second. Look at that, there's a whole list of what happened, and it's only been a single second. Then in the next few moments, he confirms that the thing promised in the title and thumbnail does happen in the video. Both the content and the feeling that was promised were both delivered in five seconds. Such a quick delivery draws you into the video. What do you think would happen if you did this with your intros? What Mr. Beast does in the next 15 seconds are complete genius, and one of the reasons he's so popular. But we'll look at that later. First, we gotta know, what if you're not like Mr. Beast? What if you don't make action-packed videos? How else can you make intros? What do you expect from this video? Some kind of solution to the problem, for sure. But also something light-hearted, not too serious. How do you think the intro is going to satisfy this? How you going? This is my pool. And this is a frog. It's not meant to look like this. It's dead. And this is an eastern water skink, known for their love of water. Also dead. And no, I'm not murdering them, they just keep drowning themselves, and I have no idea why. So today, I'm gonna make a little robot lifeguard to save them. Notice the contrast in pacing compared to the Mr. Beast video. He took 22 seconds just to explain the problem. So why does this video have 10 million views? Shouldn't people be leaving as soon as he didn't make the video exciting? Let's look at our expectations again. He started explaining the problem right off the bat, which satisfies the first thing. Also, he's taking things lightheartedly by diving into the pool and explaining everything comically. So the expectations are met. He's also using some sneaky engagement tricks that I'll get to in just a second. All right, but first, remember this rule. Create your intros at the appropriate pacing for the genre and also reflect the style seen in the thumbnail. All right, so what are those sneaky tricks? Instead of using the usual approach of sitting in front of a camera and talking through the problem, he shows it. He uses a voiceover to explain what's happening and the camera switches about every four seconds to retain visual engagement. This is why voiceovers are such a powerful strategy. They grant you the ability to deliver strong audio and visuals simultaneously, which is crucial for intros. But that's not really what I want to talk about here. I'm focused on the hidden genius of his script. At first, I was wondering why is he explaining everything so slow? Then I realized. Rather than offering a bland description of his situation, he presents information in a way that connects you to the narrative. For example, rather than simply stating that the animals are dead, he introduces the animals first, then reveals that they're drowned in his pool. Telling the information like this is far more engaging, even if it takes longer. That's because storytelling is an extremely powerful tool to hook viewers. Moving on, you need to understand why I rewrite my intros as many as five times. Why do I spend so much time on them? Well, intros have a lot to do, and quickly as well. Therefore, you need to discover the best adjectives, sentence structure, how much detail to add, and the order of how you tell things. Simply put, every sentence must be as meaningful as possible. But wait, hold on. What if I told you that the editing matters just as much as the script? To prove it, let's look at a bare bones version of my intro. Now, you already saw the actual intro earlier, so try and notice what's missing in this one. 
Why do 90% of viewership graphs have this drop at the beginning? As we uncover the reason, you'll learn the genius technique for intros that all top performing creators use. But that's not all, we're then going to dive deep into the sneaky strategies creators use in their intros to get viewers not just watching, but immersed into their videos. So what's different is I took out the editing strategies that make intros mesmerizing. I took out all the extra graphics, sound effects, captions, transitions, and I even switched out the music to something that dulled the experience even further. Removing all of that ruined the intro. So instead, add a couple of these things every few seconds, depending on the genre of the video. And remember to have a focus on the sound design and the visuals that you have, because this gives the viewer more new things to look at. All right, so now we know how to meet expectations, but YouTube's competitive, so how can we obliterate expectations entirely? What do you think happens when you exceed expectations in the intro? You set a precedent which raises the bar for the entire video, giving viewers extra confidence that it's worth their time to watch. The first step is to know your audience. Think about who the people are that clicked your video. What else would they also want to know or see? Take some time in the intro to let viewers know that your video offers more value than just what you initially said it would. This might mean taking a different approach to titling your videos. It does make a lot of sense to wrap up everything that happens into a short sentence, but then there's nothing left to surprise people with in the intro. Also, describing everything in the title and thumbnail is often less interesting than just describing the coolest part. For example, Mr. Beast did this in that video I mentioned earlier. After meeting the expectations from his title and thumbnail in the first 5 seconds, look what he does. We're also crashing countless cars, blowing up thousands of sticks of real dynamite, and even putting 10 jet engines on a car, just to show you the most insane experiments of all time, starting with filling a house with over 100,000 fireworks. I looked through a few other Mr. Beast videos, and they almost always use this strategy. It's certainly not required, but I definitely think tactics like this is why Mr. Beast continues to explode in popularity. Okay, now you know how to make good intros, but you also gotta know how to make people watch your video all the way to the end. Click here for the strategies to do that. Some of them also begin the intro, 